Hello everyone, sorry for the delay. I had many problems with the previous video and I had to learn how to use new software to make these ones in a more efficient way. Let's see how it goes. In this video, we're going to perform what I call cosmetic correction. What does this mean? Well, we're going to learn how to correct back pixels in fit frames. Moreover, we're going to learn how to shift images with the image shift task. This is useful, for example, if you want to combine images where by some reason, the spectrum is at a different location on the CCD frames you want to combine. Finally, we shall learn how to actually combine them using the image combine task. Let's get started. I am going now to open one of the spectra to which we applied the bias and flat corrections. Here you have it. You may notice how there are many damaged pixels on this CCD. For example, here there is a column of dead pixels, and if I move up, you can see oops, some hot pixels over here, over here, over here, and over here. We're going to fix them with the fix disk task. But before that, we need to create a text file with the coordinates of these damaged regions. Since I am using Ubuntu, the default test editor is gedit. Here I have my file. You may remember from our previous video that in IRAF, in order to describe square regions, we use the following format. The former couple of values represent the first and last column pixel coordinates, while the later couple defines the first and last row pixel coordinates. Each of these boxes covers one of the CCD defects we saw before. Actually, the fixPix function we are going to apply performs a linear interpolation with the nearest good pixels. Therefore, the regions you define should be slightly bigger than the damaged pixels. Finally, I want you to notice how before each of these descriptions there is a number sign. In most tasks, this is taken as a command for IRAF not to take into consideration the test af after it so we can use it to write commands. Now we just need to save this file in the same folder we have our images. OK, we have already done that. We can close it. Just one warning before using the fixPisk task. And like in the case of CCD proc, for example, in the fixPix task, there is an option to create a new file. Therefore, I advise you to make a test before running it just in case you delete some scientific data. To use the image copy task, image copy, the name of the spectrum, space, and the new file name. By the way, if you want, for example, to copy several images, you would just need to write the name of the input images separated with commas, then a space, and then follow by the new files names, again separated by commas. OK, let's run this command. It's done. And now we can enter the fixed peaks fraction. This is a very simple task with only six parameters, whose default values should be fine for most of our projects. The first parameter is the input frame, and the second is the text file with the masks we want to apply. OK, let's run it. Now let's take a look at the images before and after. OK, now this line has an option to blink between open images. You can find this option in a frame, blink. OK, I hope you can see now how the hot pixels have been interpolated, for example here, and And over here. Very nice. By the way, we could have fixed these pixels with the CCD proc task. Did you might have noticed how there is a fix fix flag to activate this option and a fix file flag to specify the name of the 
mask text file. This approach is more efficient in terms of time. However, in some cases, not all frames have the same bad pixels. In those cases, you will have to use the fixed pix task or the CCD proc task with only this flag activated, this time with its own personalized mask file. Okay, we are done with the pixel corrections. On a bigger scale, you may want to shift your images. Let's close this one. For example, in my case, I want to combine images from the same object in order to get a better signal and decrease the number of cosmic rays. I can do that directly. Whatever the reason might be, in my case, the spectra is not located at the same location within the CCD, so I need to shift it first. Let me show you, in case you don't believe me. We open all the images I have at the same time with TS9. And again, we go to frame, blink frames. You may notice how the third frame is slightly displaced towards the left. The solution I'm going to show you is a bit tedious. This should be done with an image processing algorithm automatically. But until we go over Python and PyFit, this will have to do. First, let's stop this. Frame, tile. First, you need the coordinates of the same point in both spectra. In my particular case, I can use an emission line, which you can get from DS9. Okay, I have written them down in the third and first frame. And now I'm going to open them with IRA. To do that, I can use the image plot task. This command is simple enough. We only need one parameter, which is the name of the frames. Let me make this bigger. And first, you need to use this column command. A A Five. This command will average a pixel value in five columns or five rows centered in the line we are currently plotting. I am doing this to get a more realistic coordinate since this is more or less the area occupied by lines in my spectra. Okay, now I'm going to plot the coordinates from the line we estimated with DS9. To do that, to L from line and the coordinate I got, which in this case was 2641. Enter. Here we are. And now I need to get the coordinate of this peak. I'm moving the cursor over it, press space. Okay, here I have it. 507, 2639. Okay, now I, go, I need to go to a column. To do that, we use this command to C509. Enter. And my line was over here. Remember to zoom. E, E. And here I have my line, and the peak is over here. The coordinate is 107 and 2641. Okay. Now we need to repeat this step in the second frame. To go over the next image within the image plot task, you need to press the key N. By the way, if you want to go back to the previous frame, you press the M key. Remember, N for next and M for previous. Anyway, the frame is already average, so we can go directly to the coordinates we estimated from DS9. As we did before, to DAL and the coordinate, 2641. Okay. And the coordinate, we press space and we measure 503 and 2639. 
we go to the next column C 503 and it is here to zoom E E okay and we measure 500 and 1, 2641. Very nice. Okay, I hope you wrote down all these values. Myself, I use this template for that. In here, I have the same coordinates for the same line which I got from DS9. And here, I wrote down the coordinates for the same emission line from the image plot and from here I can measure the difference between both points. Now I just have to make a choice of which frame I want to shift. Let's say I want to shift the last frame. In this case I need to add this difference to the horizontal displacement. Since I didn't measure any significant displacement in the vertical direction, I leave it to zero. Now we just need to run this command. This image shift task, apart from the displacement in the horizontal and vertical directions, you only need the input frame name and an output frame name. Okay, let's run it. It's done. Let's take a look at these images to confirm everything is fine now. We use DS9 again. And as you remember, frame blink. And as you can see, now they are all properly aligned. We can't combine them. To do that, we are going to use the image combine task. Let's close this. And you can use this command. In here we have the input frames, the name of the combined image, the multiplicative scale to be applied, which in this case is the mode. And finally, as we explained before, here we have the pixel gain, the red noise, which are used for the ratio type, C reject. Let's run the command. And let's take a look at it. Okay, it looks very nice. Just a few cosmic rays, but we shall take care of those in our next video. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon.